reports this morning that the Giants are close to signing a starting pitcher. Uh, that ties well into a question I received on today's mailbag edition of Locked on Giants. We're going to talk about starting pitcher targets for the Giants, and we'll also talk about that uh, Rule 5 draft protection stuff that took place on Friday. Giants adding three players to their 40-man roster and omitting a couple as well, maybe some surprises in there. So we'll get into all of that next on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants Baseball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, now including YouTube as well. And coming up on today's show, as I said, it's going to be a mailbag Monday, and there's a couple of questions that tie in to what's going on up to the minute with the state of the San Francisco Giants. Now, the first question comes from Dan, who says, who are some low-risk pitchers we might get? And the way that ties in right now with the the up-to-the-minute state of the Giants is that Susan Slusser, who covers the Giants for the San Francisco Chronicle, reported today, just recently, like within an hour, that the Giants and the Giants were aggressively pursuing Alex Cobb And then there was another report, I think it was John Heyman uh, on Twitter, who said that the Giants were in deep discussions with Alex Cobb. So at this point, I would expect that to happen uh, because, you know, also Farhan Zaidi and Scott Harris last week both said they expected to cross the finish line with one or two players in the coming days. And so all the stars are kind of aligning that a deal gets done here in the near future, whether it's Alex Cobb or someone else, but at this point it looks like Alex Cobb. So this would be a good time uh, to mention that Alex Cobb would definitely come up. Like if, if, even if these reports hadn't come out today, I would have answered this question starting probably with Alex Cobb. And there's a number of reasons for that. For those of you who've been following this show a lot in the last couple weeks, you know that I looked at the contract predictions for MLB Trade Rumors, ESPN, and Fangraphs, each source put out a top 50 free agents list. And so I looked at every player that appeared at least once on on those lists and averaged the predicted contracts for years, average annual value, and total. And I also looked at projections for all of these players. And so I ended up using all that to put it together and come up with projected cost per projected win above replacement. That sounds complicated, but it's really a very basic way of looking at this. But I use that, like basically who costs the the least amount per projected win above replacement. And so I wanted to see, and the number one guy who comes up for me on this list is Alex Cobb at $3.44 million per projected win above replacement. Um, The totals here projected about two and a half wins above replacement and a predicted contract of just two years, $16.7 million, $8.3 million per season. Of course, we don't know what the actual production will be. We don't know what the actual contract will be, but it is interesting that he comes up as the number one guy here. And you might be thinking, I don't care at all about the the best value. But we have also talked on the show a lot about why value matters, basically because teams operate within a budget. Say it's $200 million, 
and you just want to get the most production you possibly can out of the money you spend. And so that's why signing guys to what turn out to be bargain deals end up helping your team. And bargain deals are how the Giants won 107 games. I mean, it's part of the equation. You also need superstars. You need star talent as well. I'm not saying you don't. But anyway, Alex Cobb, let's just talk about him for a minute. He He's been a good pitcher in his career. He's dealt with a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries, including in 2021. But when he was on the field, he had a quietly very productive bounce back season, put up a 3.76 ERA, but the peripherals were a lot better even. 2.92 fielding independent pitching, 3.38 expected fielding independent pitching. Strikeout rate was a career best. Velocity was a career best, which is odd. You know, he's 30. He just turned 34. So it is unusual to have a career best velocity in your age 33 season. He's been around since 2011. So, you know, 10 years into his major league career, career best strikeout rate and velocity. He's a ground ball machine, which would fit in well with the Giants and their good infield defense. And he was among the very best in the game at preventing what is called a barrel, which is not just hitting it on the sweet spot of the bat, but I'll, but this is like an official statistic, um, hitting the ball hard at an ideal launch angle kind of in the air. And he was among the best in the game at preventing this. Guys who get a lot of ground balls are naturally going to prevent barrels usually a little bit better. So among the top in ground ball rate, the top in barrel percentage, the top in average launch angle, he kind of matches Logan Webb in a lot of these categories. And we know that Webb um, is very good in that way. And so anyway, he would probably be the number one guy I would have mentioned, even if this r- rumor or report hadn't come out. But just to give you a few other answers, so we're not only talking about Alex Wood, um, low risk pitchers. And I know he's got an injury history, but if we're talking maybe 8 million per year, that's low risk. And some other guys who fit the bill for me, Alex Wood might be the next guy I would mention. I really still like Alex Wood and I hope that the Giants re-sign him. And he comes in third on my list of basically the best potential bargains, uh, putting up a similar production to, to, Alex Cobb in terms of the projection and a roughly similar cost, about two years, 20 million predicted. Um, Andrew Heaney would have been on my list, but he already got signed by the Dodgers. You say Kikuchi is maybe a low risk guy for a relatively cheap contract. And maybe Danny Duffy will be the last name I'll mention as a possibility. Another guy who's dealt with injuries, but therefore the contract wouldn't be too expensive, and there is upside. Uh, so yeah, those those three are the ones that I'll name, or four, I guess, are the ones that I'll name for now. And we'll see, and we'll definitely have a reaction out if the Giants do make an official signing. So coming up next, we have a lot more questions to get to. I want to get to the Rule 5 stuff. Giants made some moves on Friday, so we'll talk about them next as it ties in with a couple of questions. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again. The best part, though, is that there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at DirecTV.com. That's DirecTV.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right, as promised, we are going to get into more questions and we're going to tie it in with some current happenings with the San Francisco Giants. Candlestick Will asks, as part of a three-part kind of question, uh, will Joey Bart, Elliot Ramos, and Sean Jelly 
make the 26-man roster. And then JLG says, which guys left unprotected in the Rule 5 draft do you see getting picked? And then Matthew says, do you see Seth Corey getting traded by the draft? So all of these questions are related. We'll start with Candlestick Wills, which is, will Joey Bart, Elliot Ramos, and Sean Jelly make the 26-man roster? I assume you mean on opening day, and my inclination would be a heavy no. I don't think that all three of those guys are going to make the 26-man roster. There's some question as to whether any of them will be on the opening day 26-man roster. I think Joey Bart at this point is the most likely, given that they, you know, their catching depth chart right now looks like Bart first and um, Kurt Casale second. Kurt Casale officially, I mean, hasn't even been tendered a contract yet. That deadline hasn't come up yet, and I fully expect them to make that move. That's kind of a side point. But uh, Elliot Ramos did not have the strongest season in the upper levels of the minors, and I've heard Farhan Zaidi at some point, I don't remember where exactly I heard it, but it was after the season, he basically said they want to see better performance from Elliot Ramos before they consider calling him up. So the fact that he was added to the 40-man, I'm not sure I said this already, but uh, Ramos and Jelly were among three players the Giants added to the 40-man roster ahead of Friday's deadline to protect players from the Rule 5 draft. And so that's that's where this question is coming from. And Sean Jelly, the 6'11 starting pitcher as well, added to that 26-man roster. I think ideally, and what I would expect to happen is that the Giants fill out a rotation of major league veterans, and they understand that you need eight, nine, ten starting pitchers to get through a season. And so I think what I would expect is that Sean Jelly will debut in 2022 for the San Francisco Giants, but I don't think they're just going to hand him a starting job out of spring training. It's like, you know, we saw Scott Kazmir make starts for the Giants. We saw Sammy Long make starts for the Giants and others. So Sean Jelly will just kind of fit in that mold. Well, he'll get his opportunities at some point during the season, probably because he's now on the 40-man roster. And for Elliot Ramos, he's just going to have to earn his way into an opportunity with upper minors performance. So moving on, I guess, to the next part of the question, which guys left unprotected in the Rule 5 draft do you see getting picked? So some of the notable omissions by the Giants include outfielder Diego Rincones, uh, left-handed pitcher Seth Corey, third baseman David Villar, and catcher Ricardo Henoves. And so it's hard for me to say I'm not like the number one authority on prospects, certainly at all. But from what I understand, well, it's hard to say. I mean, Rincones, I think, was probably some people's biggest surprise. Seth Corey, a couple years ago, was considered one of you know the better prospects, pitching prospects in the Giants system. And he had like a meteoric rise after fixing some command issues. But Corey had a disastrous season from a command perspective in 2021. He took a big step backwards. His walk rate was about 20%. So one out of every five batters he faced all year got walked. So it's hard to say. I don't know. But those are the four guys. I would expect at least one and maybe more and maybe all of them to be taken in the Rule 5 draft, which is supposed to be in early December, but we don't know if it's even going to happen on time. I mean, it's probably not going to happen on time because of the impending potential lockout starting on December 2nd if there's no CBA agreed to by then. And it looks, you know, all signs are pointing to them not having something done by then. So uh, I expect the Rule 5 draft to eventually happen. So the question about do you see Seth Corey getting traded by the draft Maybe. I I just don't know that the Giants think that he'll be selected because of those command issues. Like, you know, if you're walking 20% of batters, it's going to be impossible to have any kind of success. And that's in the minor leagues, let alone the major leagues. And so to be selected in the Rule 5 draft, a team would have to carry him all season long 
on their major league team. So maybe, I mean, if they think he's going to be selected, then yeah, it would make sense. But we'll see. I, I guess I'm kind of iffy on that. It's a good question, but I just don't really know that I can uh, be the best source of, of being able to answer that question. So I hope that that's uh, satisfactory, uh, but that's the best that's the best I can provide at this time. Next question comes from Jared, who says, why is it that there's more rumors surrounding position players slash outfielders than pitchers for the Giants? The rotation has been the number one concern this offseason, yet besides Gosman, there's no talk of Rodone, Ray, Stroman, etc. And that's a good point. And, and I wanted to get to this question mostly because I want to point out that I kind of ignore a lot of the rumors that are out there surrounding the Giants. And specifically, we've seen rumors about Starling Marte and the Giants. We've seen rumors about Nick Castellanos and the Giants. And I just kind of don't believe them, to be honest, because the Giants, everybody knows they have a ton of money to spend. They can sign anybody they want. And if you're an agent and you want to kind of drive up a frenzy for your client, everybody's going to be throwing out word that the Giants are interested, right? Like the Giants are that team that anybody can use to kind of create, uh, you know, smoke, you know, to make it look like they're interested. So when we have these big national reporters, certain ones more than others, certain reporters more than others, I just don't trust when they say, oh, the Giants are among the teams interested in Nick Castellanos. It's like, okay, maybe. But I agree with you. I think the Giants' focus right now is on the starting rotation. They're not like going all in on Nick Castellanos right now. I think they're working on the starting rotation. And so, yeah, I mean, we've even heard Zaidi and Scott Harris basically say that. So I would just ignore it. And also, I just think we haven't seen a lot of rumors around those pitchers anyway. For whatever reason, I think we've seen some stuff with Robbie Ray. But I haven't seen a ton of Marcus Stroman rumors. I haven't seen a ton of Carlos Rodon rumors. So I'm sure the Giants are all over these guys and, you know, leaving no stone unturned with these starting pitchers. So I wouldn't worry about it. It's just about what gets reported and what doesn't. So coming up next, we are going to get to more questions. There's a question about... Uh, Nick Castellanos' fit, which I think is a good question because he is so heavily rumored to the Giants this year and in the past. Say a Suzuki being posted and much more. So we'll get to that in a second. But first, I want you to know that I love Thanksgiving. And of course, it is coming up around the corner here. One of the best parts about Thanksgiving is those Thanksgiving desserts. But for me, there's always a little bit of a conflict because I don't want to eat too much sugar. I just don't want to do it. But, so how do you deal with that? Well, for me, the perfect solution comes in the form of Built Bar. Built Bars can replace that coconut cream pie with a coconut Built Bar. Or go replace that uh, raspberry pie with a raspberry Built Bar. They have tons of flavors to replace your favorite desserts. And they taste like candy bars, but come in with a healthy profile. Just 4 to 5 grams of sugar just like 150 calories max, something like that. So go to BuiltBar.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 and you can get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, here we go. We're going to get to more questions. The next one comes from Jacob who says, where does Nick Castellanos fit in the Giants lineup? Outfielder or potential DH? Well, that's the beauty of the potential DH, which I think we all saw in 2020 when the DH did come to the National League out of the weirdness of the COVID season. But it could be both, right? You're not going to... These days, teams don't necessarily or usually even have a primary designated hitter. They just kind of use that spot to rotate through guys to give guys not really a day off, but just to kind of mix and match. And the DH becomes a useful added bonus offensive position. But I think, yeah, I mean, he's not known as a good defensive outfielder. That is for sure. And so the less he plays in the outfield, the better probably for whatever team 
does end up signing him. Although it does look to me like he's made some strides in the defensive department. That being said, I mean, man, this guy had a monster offensive season. And so he made up for any defensive deficiencies by just being so good at the plate. He hit 309, 362 on base, 576 slugging. Man, so he was he was quite excellent offensively, and that's why he opted out of his deal with the Reds. So the fit, yeah, I mean, I think it would be kind of a, I don't think they want to sign someone to just be a designated hitter, because then that, it makes it, they want the roster flexibility, right, to be able to use that as a interchangeable part of their lineup. Like right now, you could have, for example, Darren Ruff, he can play left, he can play first, and he could be a DH. Wilmer Flores can play second, can play some third, can play some first, and he could DH, and on and on. La Stella, second base, DH, first base, third base. So they don't want someone who's just like, okay, you're the DH, and that's that, uh, because that would kind of hinder them a little bit. So I would expect they have some room in the outfield. It, it does depend on some decisions they have coming up, like uh, the tender deadline is on December 2nd. Another thing, we don't necessarily know how that's going to play out with the uh, potential lockout coming up. But Alex Dickerson is arbitration eligible and very well may be non-tendered. And so then that opens up a spot in the outfield where the, the Giants currently have uh, projected Lamont Wade Jr., Mike Yastrzemski, Steven Duggar out of options, and so there's that's kind of going to force the issue a little bit. Darren Ruff is uh, able to come back, Austin Slater. So they've got some outfielders, but they, they also have room. Like Steven Duggar doesn't have to be starting in center field, but currently, according to roster resource, that's kind of how it's projected. But also, they might want to do that. Otherwise, you're going to, I don't know, trade Steven Duggar or he's he and Slater are on the bench on a given night. I don't know exactly, but they, they have room to add an outfielder. We've heard them kind of rumored to Mark Canna, Seiya Suzuki, and Nick Castellanos as well, and Starling Marte. So they have the room, and for Castellanos, yeah, I just think it would be a little bit of both. Probably not right field, probably not center field. I think left field if, if you're looking for a really specific answer. So Candlestick Will, another part of the question is which right-handed outfielder are we getting and which pitcher will be our number two? So a two-part question here, which right-handed outfielder are we getting? Again, I'm going to refer to my little uh, cheat sheet that I made based on averaging contract predictions. And I just keep coming back to um, Mark Hanna. I think that Mark Hanna Seiya Suzuki and Starling Marte and also maybe Tommy Pham as a kind of bargain bounce back candidate type of guy. Those are the ones who stand out to me. Maybe Avisail Garcia, but Canna, if I had to like zero it in, Canna, Suzuki, and maybe Starling Marte are the names that stand out to me. And there's a lot of questions I'm getting about Seiya Suzuki. I know he was fantastic in Japan and one of the best players to come out of Japan in a long time, potentially. But that's about where my knowledge of him ends. And so, you know, I haven't scouted Seiya Suzuki. I haven't been following his career in Japan. These guys are always, like, brand new to me when I hear about them and hear about them getting posted. And by the way, he's getting posted today. So teams beginning today can sign him. And there's a 30-day window. But uh, we don't know. I think that the window... We don't know exactly how it would work again with the potential lockout because a lockout would put a freeze on transactions. And so would the uh, 30-day window get paused? And this is something that would have to be kind of negotiated. Uh, if it doesn't get paused, the expiration of that 30-day window would, I mean, most of that period would occur when transactions are not allowed to take place. So presumably there would be a pause on the 30-day window. So we'll have whatever, you know, eight days now, and then the remaining 22, assuming there's a lockout, after the lockout ends. So we don't know exactly, but Seiya Suzuki is definitely a guy to pay attention to, and there's definitely a potential fit there with the Giants as a right-handed outfielder with power, and I think, you know, good 
at bat quality, which is the criteria that Farhan Zaidi mentioned when he was kind of asked about this topic recently. Andy Baggerly is the one who got that quote from Zaidi, who said, like, certainly we're going to be in that market. So those are the outfielders I'm going to mention for now. And then lastly, who will be the Giants' number two pitcher? I assume you're assuming that Logan Webb kind of qualifies as a number one, which I think is fair. I'm not sure you want to rely on him to just give you like 200 ace innings, but clearly he, I mean, he had a monster breakout season. I'm just going to maintain that I, I think Kevin Gosman comes back that I'm not like extremely confident in that. Maybe I'm like 50, 50 Gosman coming back, but 50% is still like a high probability. So I'll just say Gosman. I think Gosman and Webb became good friends throughout the last couple of seasons. And so what better to have than two good friends who are both uh, good pitchers at the top of your starting rotation. So it'll be, I think they'll get a high quality arm. They're not just going to sign a bunch of Alex Cobbs and call it a day. I think whether it's Gosman or Scherzer, I would love to see Max Scherzer with the Giants or I mean, I don't think Clayton Kershaw is coming here, but he is a free agent. Marcus Stroman, Robbie Ray. I think uh, Gosman and Scherzer are kind of my my top preferred options there among those I just named. Robbie Ray is probably going to get a huge deal, with, which I think is pretty risky given his history of being sometimes good, sometimes not good. And he also has the qualifying offer, just to, just something to, to mention. He He's also going to cost, in addition to a lot of money, you're going to give up your second overall, I mean, second your second highest draft pick as a team, which is, yeah, some people are going to say, who cares? But it's just an added cost worth mentioning. Anyway, that is all the time we have for today. By the time you're listening to this, for all I know, the Giants have signed Alex Cobb. So we'll be back tomorrow talking about any new rumors. I expect those to continue uh, as the Giants are evidently in hot pursuit of some players right now. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. I uh, really hope you enjoyed today's show. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter, at Ben Kaspik. Uh, and if you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe as well. Anyway, I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.